since I put out the latest sheet load of cards, December 2022, I have seen and heard so many great tips on putting them together from my collaboration team and you. I thought I would stop by today and share a look at some of those, including how you can get that angle correct without a printer. My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. And if you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. This month's sheet load of cards is a little extra special. Instead of it being the regular two page printable, it is three because that final page gives you some templates to help you get the angle right on your card fronts. I know not all of you have a printer and that was one of the things that worried me about this edition, but one of my collaboration team members, Ashley at Mint Twist Cards, shared something on her video that is going to fix that if you can't print this out. Make sure if you haven't already that you check out her video for what she used to line it up, and I'm going to give you some alternatives here in my video today. I'll also be showing you how you can use 6x6 paper for this month, and if you do have a printer and you printed out that last sheet, how to preserve this or protect it from adhesive so you can use it over and over again. Now today's video won't be a full process video. I'm going to share short clips with tips, but if you do want to see that process video or the debut where you can find out how to download this printable, I do have both of those linked in that description box below. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you about the tools and products I'm using, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Like I mentioned, for today's cards, we will be using 6x6 paper. Now, I did do a live last week where I showed you how to do that, so you can see the full process, but I thought it would be a fun tip to share in case you have a lot of 6x6 that you want to make cards with. Now, this pattern paper was gifted to me by Pam P, who is a subscriber, and it is actually double-sided. So what I'll be doing are cutting all the pieces for one card out of this, and then we will flip-flop it for that coordinating pattern. I'll show you quickly how to cut one piece, and then I will do the rest of the pattern paper cutting and my matting and card bases off-screen. To cut the papers, we will use the single card dimensions that I always give each month. And if your pattern paper has a specific orientation, make sure you know that before you make the first cut. Mine do not, they can all be used either way. So I'm going to take this six by six and I'm going to switch it up just a little bit to make more use of my paper. And I'm going to cut this to four inches wide. And then I have my two by six inch strip that goes diagonally right here. And all I have to do is cut this piece down to five and a quarter inches tall. This does leave us a little scrap, but this is great for decorating the inside of your cards. Now I'll go ahead and cut the rest of this and be right back. All right, everything is cut and I also matted the strips that will go diagonally. For the darker card bases, I put a piece of white cardstock on the inside for the personal message. And instead of making all of my cards top fold like this, I did go ahead and do one where the fold is on the long side and we're going to rotate the sketch just so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead off screen and put our pattern paper on the front of each card. Okay, crafty friends, it's me editing Alicia. And I just want to say, if you're following along, do not go ahead and put your pattern paper on the front of your card. You'll see why here in just a minute. 
and I just want to show you kind of how this is different. On the original sketch, the pattern paper was slightly smaller and it was matted with another piece of cardstock before putting it on the card front. But I again did change it up just a little bit. I made this four by five and a quarter to use that six by six paper better. And this is actually gonna be the same size that you need when we use the template later, even though it doesn't have that cardstock mat. Be right back. While I was off camera, I also went and cut that two and five eighths inches off the bottom of each of my diagonal strips. Now, let me show you some different ways you can get these added to your card fronts. Hold the presses. So this is when I'm gonna be real with you. Normally, I would edit this out and restart because I made a small mistake. But I think sometimes viewers get the impression that us as YouTube card makers are perfect and never make any mistakes. And that is not the case. We just get to edit it out and keep it to ourselves. Well, I was not thinking and I should not have added my pattern papers to my card bases just yet because I need to put the diagonal strip on just this piece of paper, not on the whole card front itself. Now you could definitely use the diagonal trick that I'm gonna show you today if you don't have a printout and put it across the entire card front. But I want to show you how to use the sketch as is. So I'm gonna carefully pull these pattern paper pieces off the front so we can keep going. Let me know in that comment section below if you've made an oops or a happy little accident lately in your card making. I do want to point out here that I was a little bit lucky. Because I used a tape runner, I am able to just wipe that off with my fingers once the pattern paper is removed from the card front. If I had used liquid glue, I would have had to try to fix out a different way to fix this. All right, I successfully got these off the front. Now you can see there was a little bit of tearing on some of the card fronts, but this was a heavier weight, so this will be fine to reuse, and those little tears will be covered up later with that same piece of pattern paper. Now let's go ahead and move on. You might be wondering why I brought in page three of the printable when one of the main ideas of this video was not to have to have a printer, but I know that many of you do and use it. And in my original video, I said something you know about how I had torn mine and I need to figure out another way to use this, but not tear it up with adhesive. Well, so many of you had great ideas for this and you left it down in those comments. And some of those were like, put it in a sheet protector, laminate it. Um, I probably will eventually laminate mine. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But what I do have is clear cardstock. Now you guys know that I love to make shaker cards and clear cards, and I always keep clear cardstock in two different weights. This is the lighter one that I would use for shaker windows. So what I did the other day on my live video is I put this right on top of my printable and I can still see through it, but the adhesive will not stick to it. Now you could use acetate packaging, you could maybe use a Ziploc baggie. Use what you have around you and give this a try. Now this pattern piece of paper is the same dimension as the matted pattern from the original sketch, so that's just going to go in the same place. Then I'm going to add adhesive to the back of these and get it put on here. That is all the same as on the process video. There we have our diagonal strip added. Some adhesive did get on the plastic, but it pulled right up. So this is ready to have those edges cut off and be added to a card front. Now let's look at ways you can get this added without having to have a printout. Once again, for this next tip, it was inspired by Ashley of Mint Twist Cards. Now for hers, she has a grid mat that she always works on, but I don't usually work on one and I know that maybe not everybody does. So I'm gonna find things that I do own that we can use that same concept on. 
the first thing I thought of was a piece of graft paper because it has straight lines. Now I do have to darken one of those just so it's easier to find that same line later. So I'm gonna do that real quickly here. I will be using a T ruler and a pencil. You could always use a regular ruler for this or just follow the line with your pencil or you might choose to use a pen or a marker. I'm just gonna choose a line that is about halfway on the paper and I'm going to just draw with my pencil right down that. We just need to have a straight line. So it might be kind of hard to see on camera, but for me, I can definitely tell which line I'm gonna be using because later the center of that will be covered up and it might be hard if I didn't highlight that to figure out which line up here matched up with the line down here. Since this is just regular paper like my print, I am gonna go ahead and bring in my piece of clear cardstock, but you could definitely just be more careful with your adhesive and not protect this. I use this grid paper a lot, so it doesn't matter if it gets a little torn up because I use it stuff for like ink blending, stenciling, that kind of thing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your opposite corners and you're gonna line the top up with the top right here where that line meets the other line and then the bottom up along that same line. So now we have a straight angle right between those two. Now I am gonna go ahead and just tack this down with a little painter's tape that has had the tackiness removed just to make sure it gets held in place. Then I'll add adhesive to the back of my first piece and making sure that the matted edge goes to the inside. You will then just put this piece so it goes straight across up here. Try to find the center, which will be about four and a half squares here. And it's just gonna, the edge will fit right with the corner of the pattern paper. Just like that. Gonna add adhesive to this one. and it's gonna get put in the bottom in just the same way. Again, just lining it up with that corner and centering it. And there you have your angle. Let me know in the comment section below if this is gonna be helpful to you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one other thing you might have that you could use. Do you have a paper trimmer that might have a grid in the background? I bet most of us as card makers do. Now, if your paper trimmer doesn't have a nice clear grid like this, you could maybe use a scoreboard. You could use the same kind of crafting mat like Ashley did, or my friend Danny even mentioned she has a quilting grid that is clear plastic with a grid on it that she could use. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna use the five inch line because that's a little bit darker than the lines around it and will make it easier to line up with my corners. And do the same thing, the top corner with that line, the bottom one, and sometimes you need to just wiggle it just a little bit to make sure it's in the right place and then we're going to hold it down. And there we go. Now this way might take a little bit more concentration and a little more time but I think it is the perfect way to get around maybe not having a printer or just wanting to use something else you already have. Let me know below what you might have with a grid that you could use for this technique. Now that the rest of the process is pretty much the same as in that original process video, I'm gonna finish these cards off screen and then I'll come back on and show you those. Instead of using a circle with the sentiment stamped onto it, I'm gonna be stamping and die cutting my sentiment, which reads sending hugs with the get the word out sending hugs stamp and die from Tailored Expressions. I love this message. It could be for lots of occasions. And I love this font and the coordinating dies from Tailored Expressions. So I'll finish these and be right back. Here's a close up look at each of the three cards. To finish off the front, 
I stamped and die cut the sediment in a coordinating ink. This was adhered to a vellum circle and then popped up off the card front with some foam tape. For added accent, I chose two coordinating cardstock colors for each card and die cut this leafy shape. And then of course it needed some bling, so I added a few holographic enamel dots to the front of each. On the inside, I used those leftover scraps of pattern paper for a little decoration. If you enjoyed the extra little tips for the newest sheet load of cards and getting to see how I created these, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.